It is dusk in Kolar, a district in southern Karnataka famous for its rocky landscape and erstwhile gold mines. At Hanumanahalli, quiet settles across the barren hills. It is time. Soon, through the tiniest gap in this large rock, a Kolar leaf-nosed bat flutters into the fading light. One by one, more bats emerge from their small underground cave. But this isn't just any cave. It is the last remaining habitat of these flying mammals, the Kolar leaf-nosed bat. The speciality of about Kolar leaf-nosed bat is that it's a point endemic. When I say point endemic, it's found only in this particular place in Kolar. This is Rajesh Puttaswamaya, a corporate lawyer by profession Rajesh has been drawn to wildlife since childhood. While I was actively involved in wildlife for almost 15 years, in fact, with a lot of researchers, photographers, scientists, and other wildlife community, uh, I realized that many people didn't ever mention or talk about bats in all these years. And that kind of really struck me about how come they have been neglected. And when I started searching about bats and understanding more about them, uh, I realized that India had about 120 species of bats at that point of time which is almost like 28-30% of the mammalian species across India. And I hardly knew about one or two species and just the name probably, not even much about the ecology. So that really struck me saying that such a large, uh, diverse population of a species has been completely neglected and has not been even documented. That's wherein when I decided, okay, let me focus on my future to focus and study only on bats and nothing else. Today, Rajesh runs the Bat Conservation of India Trust, a non-profit dedicated to conserving bats and their habitats. In 2015, he chanced upon the Hanumanahalli cave during a routine baseline study of bats. This is a very small bat weighing about 6 to 9 grams uh, in weight and has a very uh, bright yellowish belly with a pointed ears and a unique uh, loaf knee structure which helps in echolocation which is quite similar to the radar system in aircraft's navigation system. Until 2019, only two out of 126 bat species in India were protected under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. The rest was considered vermin and harmful superstitions further endangered them. When Rajesh found the Kolar leaf-nosed bat, only 200 remained. The species was on the brink of extinction. Even though it was listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List, Hanumanahalli, their last known habitat, wasn't legally protected. The biggest threat for the Kolar Lutros bat is from quarrying, uh, which is quite rampant across the Kolar region and also in the Deccan Plateau. Um, you know, when you talk about rock cured crops, it's one of the neglected habitats, I would say, because when the government or the policymakers looks at this habitat, you really do not find big mammals. So as a result, they feel, okay, these habitats are not that important. In fact, uh, in the government policy, they are classified as Karab land. Karab land means wasteland. So any wasteland is usually the first uh, landscape to get hit for any development purposes or any other uh, activities. In 2019, after years of persistence by conservationists, the Karnataka government declared the Hanumanahalli cave a conservation reserve. And in 2022, the Indian Wildlife Protection Act was amended to include the Kolar leaf-nosed bat in Schedule 1 which gives it the highest level of legal protection in the country. While this uh, ensured that the home of the Kolar Neutros bat was protected, uh, its foraging ground was not within the radar of the conservation reserve. So when I started working on the Kolar Neutros bat, it was critical for us to understand if we have to save the species, we need to understand their whole ecology. Right now, we know only about a taxonomic perspective, how it looks, probably a few photographs, but we have no idea how far this bat travels for foraging, where the, which are the kind of habitat it forages on, what kind of insects it feeds on, or how does it really survive? Does it migrate from one place to other place? We don't have much information about the species. So it is important that we understand as much as possible about the species. Uh, to ensure we are able to come up with a proper plan. Lower right hand side of the queue. 
To better understand their behavior, Rajesh and his team introduced radio telemetry to track their movements. This is strong beep signal towards KL side. What this means is that we will be deploying a small uh, chips with an antenna on the back of the bat and then track them using uh, antennas and receivers and then follow the bat when they leave the cave all the way to the area where they go for foraging. So this gives us an idea in terms of how long do these bats travel on a night in search of their food and how often do they travel in overnight? Say, do they forage all night or do they come back in multiple boats or or do they have a secondary roost or a new other cave where they go and leave? Or do they even migrate over a period of time? So these are the, some of the aspects we are trying to understand using radio telemetry technology. This data is vital for developing a long-term conservation plan. Without it, these bats may soon disappear. The Hanumanahalli cave is also home to three other species. Schneider's leaf-nosed bat, the fulvus leaf-nosed bat and Kajuria's leaf-nosed bat. Researchers fear these four species face constant stress from competing for limited resources. Uh, when four species of the same family live together, uh, we don't know how they are kind of sharing their space. So could there be a possibility that one species is at caught up with the other species uh, to ensure that it kind of remains relevant in the particular cave and is able to stay? Or is it forced to kind of mate with other species and creating a hybridization that could have an impact on the genetic quality of the species? Uh, since the Kola Lintros bat is found only in one place right now, it's important for us to carry out an extensive study across the similar landscape to find if the bats are found in another place. If not, then I think it's important for us to kind of create an alternate place and see if there's a need for us to kind of uh, move some of the individuals to a new place so that uh, any destruction to the last remaining cave it does not impact the survival of the species. Kolar's proximity to Bengaluru is accelerating urbanization in the region. The lush green fields which are foraging grounds of these bats are slowly vanishing. The district is home to many species of bats. Some play a key role in pollination. Most help control insect populations. But today, many bat species are either endangered or living in threatened habitats. Wildlife researchers and conservationists are calling for a long-term conservation strategy, one that includes local participation to protect endemic species like the kolar leaf-nosed bat.